The UK chemical industry is valued at more than £60 billion per year, with manufacturing located mainly in Humberside, Teesside, Scotland and Northwest England. A range of factors influence the location and operation of a chemical plant. One site, on the north side of the Humber estuary, is largely occupied by the BP Chemicals Salt End plant, manufacturing acetic acid, but also includes a plant operated by Yara, who manufacture ammonia. Chemical sites like this one employ large numbers of workers. Nearly a thousand employees work in the Salt End complex, many of whom with specialist skills. A key requirement for the siting of chemical plants is ease of access for this workforce. The Salt End site is within a few miles of Hull and transport links to the site are fast and efficient. Many chemical operations are built adjacent to a navigable estuary, in this case the Humber. This enables the easy import by sea of raw materials and the flat nature of the land, away from habitations, allows sites to expand easily. A range of raw materials are supplied to large and varied complexes, such as the Salt End site. The main acetic acid plant requires supplies of ethene, methanol and methane. The Yara ammonia plant needs sources of nitrogen and hydrogen, and these are both obtained from close by. Methane and ethene are gaseous feedstocks derived from petrochemical processing, and so, for the process carried out at the Salt End site, they can be piped in from petrochemical plants elsewhere on Humberside. Methanol, as a liquid feedstock, may be transported in by sea or in road tankers. Safe storage of liquid feedstocks is a crucial aspect of plant design. The containment and separation of flammable substances is a particular issue and is one reason why different components of a chemical plant must be physically separated. Feedstocks and products will also be moved within the complex by pipes. At Salt End, the acetic acid manufacturing process produces hydrogen as a co-product, which is piped the short distance to the ammonia plant. The other feedstock for ammonia production, nitrogen, is produced by an air products plant, which is adjacent to the Salt End site. The environmental impact of chemical plants is continuously monitored, and a range of strategies have been implemented in recent years to dramatically reduce it. At Salt End, emissions of gases such as hydrocarbons and NOx have seen dramatic decreases over the past two decades, and CO2 emissions have reduced to less than half their pre-2000 level. Control of emissions into environmentally sensitive areas such as estuaries has been a key issue for the chemical industry. At Salt End, emissions into the Humber have been virtually eliminated since the introduction of an off-site wastewater treatment plant. The key stage in the manufacture of ammonia at the Yarra plant is the harbour process, which was developed at the start of the 20th century. Nitrogen and hydrogen gases are compressed and passed over catalyst beds containing an iron catalyst at about 200 bar pressure and 450 degrees centigrade. This temperature is necessary for a fast enough rate of reaction. If a higher temperature was used, the equilibrium constant would become uneconomically small. As it is, only about 15% of the feedstock is converted to ammonia, so the ammonia product is cooled and collected as a liquid, while unreacted gases are recycled and passed through the reactor again. By doing this, yields of up to 98% are possible. The ammonia manufactured by the harbour process is primarily used as the starting material for the manufacture of nitrogenous fertilisers, such as ammonium sulphate or urea. Other applications of ammonia include being used in the manufacture of polymers such as nylon, as well as cleaning liquid and even fuel in rocket engines.